I'm going to turn an 0-82 team into Stanley Cup champions. So far, we have no good players on this team, but we will once we get the first overall pick and draft Connor Bedard. And good thing I'm an elite GM, because this would take a long time if I wasn't. So when the first season came to an end, we're going 0-82, exactly what we wanted, and we're even allowing a thousand goals. That's probably not a record we should be proud of, but I'm proud of it. And shout out to Justin Kippy. He's going to lead the way while being minus 383. He's a Hawaii Heroes legend and we'll never forget him. In this first season, Brad Marchand's leading all scores with 111 points, consisting of 47 goals and 64 assists, while Dougie Hamilton's leading the defense with 26 goals and 61 helpers for 87 points. Freddie Anderson's going to lead the way for goaltenders, picking up 41 wins while posting a 929 save percentage and 209 goals against some absolutely elite numbers. But those elite numbers wouldn't translate into the playoffs as Carolina is falling in the first round, while Tampa goes on to win the Stanley Cup over the Colorado Avalanche in six games. Steven Stamkos is going to lead the way with 10 goals and 19 assists for 29 points, while Vasilevsky's picking up 16 wins with a 929 save percentage and a 213 goals against. So in the draft, I got some bad news. We're not getting the first overall pick. We're not even getting the second overall pick. We're dropping all the way to number three. We just went 0-82, the perfect tank for Connor Bedard, and we dropped to number three. You hate to see it, you really do. And we can't even trade for Bedard, because I don't want to include next year's first rounder, because that's going to be top three too. So we had four picks in the upcoming draft, so that means we made a few moves. The third overall pick, we're going to draft Peros, a medium lead potential center. And then I'm packaging the 67th overall pick, along with the 5th and a 7th to the Sharks for the 45th. And then I'm turning that 45th overall pick into a medium lead potential goalie. And then our final move is going to have us sending a 5th and a 6th to the Rangers for a second. If that trade doesn't make any sense to you, it shouldn't. I'm abusing the system because for some reason, NHL 23 thinks a 5th and a 6th has the same value as a 2nd. So our only signing during the re-sign phase is going to be Peros, and I'm just giving him his rookie deal. But now we're in free agency, so it's time to make some moves. Bergeron, one year at 7.9 million. Pavelski, one year at 7.7 million. Both of these guys are being flipped at the trade deadline, and I'm retaining half their salary so I can get the maximum value from them. Horvat, I'm going to bring you in at 6.9 million per year for four years. McLeod, four years at 1.8 million. Gauthier, four years at 1.2 million. Gavrinov, five years at 4.3 million. And then JT Comper, two years at 3.6 million. So I had the AI sign the rest of my team because I really didn't care who we got. But don't get it twisted. We're still tanking. We're going to get the first overall pick because we got screwed last season. But before we get into another year of tanking, you might not have heard, but I'm trying to pass the Philadelphia Flyers and subscribers on YouTube. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on so you can be notified of when I upload. So we're going right to the trade deadline and then making some moves. But at the trade deadline, we're doing way better than expected with a 27, 33, and 7 record. I'm surprised we've won more than 12 games, to be honest. So I'm going to send Bergeron while retaining half his salary, Eller in a 7th over to the Stars for Haltonen. And then I'm going to send Pavelski while retaining half his salary along with a 2nd, a 3rd, and a 7th to the Edmonton Oilers for Holloway. And then Holloway, I'm going to go all in with you. 7 years at 6.7 million. You better become an elite player for us. So with that signing in the books, we'll simulate to the end of the season and hopefully finish last. We got some good news. With a 33, 44, and 7 record, we're finishing dead last in the entire NHL. You love to see it, you really do. Bo Horvat did what he could for us, picking up 56 points while leading the team. And Gavrinov, he's going to pick up 2 goals and 32 helpers for 34 points to lead the defense. In our goaltending situation, it doesn't matter. Neither of these guys are going to be back next season. Looking at the entire league, Kucherov's going to lead the way with 56 goals and 47 assists for 103 points, while Victor Hemmings picking up 8 goals and 63 assists for 71 points. Taking a look at goaltender, Samsonov's leading them all and wins with 43 while posting a 913 save percentage and a 257 goals against. But in the playoffs, the Chicago Blackhawks are going to complete the fastest rebuild imaginable, beating the Florida Panthers in 5 games. So just imagine, the Chicago Blackhawks team right now, like the current team they have right now, one year from now would win a Stanley Cup. Yeah, that seems realistic. But finally, I have some good news for you guys. We're getting the first overall pick, so we're going to draft somebody elite. As you can see, we're only making two picks in the draft, but they're going to be two elite picks. The first pick's going to be Rutu, medium elite potential defensive defenseman. He's going to be a massive help for us. And with the second pick, we're getting a medium elite potential goalie. But of course, we did make some moves. I'm going to send the 40th overall pick to Philly for the rights to Tony D'Angelo and two fours, a fourth and a sixth going to the Devils for Andre Plot, a fourth going to the Ducks for a fourth and the rights to Kuzmenko, and then I'm sending a fourth to Detroit for the fourth and the rights to Kubalik. But Kubalik, more than likely, he's not coming back next season. So now we gotta make some signings in the re-sign phase. D'Angelo, five years at 7.5 million. Kovnov, I'm giving you your rookie deal. And then Kuzmenko, three years at 1.2 million. And then Rutu, you're also getting your entry-level deal. So now it's time to make some big splashes in free agency. Pesci, five years at 5.8 million. Chandler Stevenson, five years at 4.6 million. Perron, one year at 3.3 million. I'm trading you at the deadline. Marc-Andre Fleury, we need somebody to be a goaltender for us. So two years at 3.7 million. And then Pavelski, I'm going to bring you back again so I can flip you. One year at 7.4 million. And then Blake Wheeler, I'm going to give you one year at 7 million. And then our 
final move before we get into next season is Gauthier and a 7 is going to be shipped off to Tampa for a 3rd and a 6. He just didn't work out for us, so I'd rather get some assets while I can. So I'd say we're 2 years from truly competing with the rest of the league. We're slowly building a good core here, but I do think we're a few years away. So I'll go ahead and simulate halfway through the season just so we can see how the team's looking. At the halfway point, the team's looking average with a 19, 21, and 3 record. We're 6th in the Pacific, but 27th in the entire league. But the fact that we're so close to 500 is very surprising to me. But we're heading towards the trade deadline, and some moves have to be made. So Pavelski, once again, I'm going to retain half your salary and package you up with a third and two fourths to the National Predators for Tovanen. And then Perron's going to go to the Leafs for a third and a seventh. And then Wheeler, a third and a fifth, off to Tampa Bay for a solid prospect. And then Palat, you didn't really work out with this team, but I'm still going to get something for you. You're going to the Calgary Flames for a third and Martinez, but Martinez isn't going to be brought back next season. I just want to clear up some cap space. When the season came to an end, we're doing terrible once again with a 33, 42, and 7 record, ninth in the Pacific, and 32nd in the entire league. You love to see it, you really do. Peros, he did what he could with us 14 goals and 36 assists for 50 points, while Tony D'Angelo is picking up 7 goals and 30 assists for 37 points. Marc Andre Fleury picked up 23 wins, which is 23 more than I was expecting, while posting a 906 save percentage and a 304 goals against. Looking at the entire league, Connor McDavid's leading the way with 107 points, consisting of 50 goals and 57 helpers, while Alexander Ovechkin, he's casually going to pick up 62 goals at 39 years old. This guy's never going to slow down, is he? Quinn Hughes is going to lead all defensemen, 10 goals and 60 assists for 70 points, while Sebastian Kosa, he's picking up 39 wins with a 915 save percentage and a 255 goals against. But Kosa wasn't done there, he's going to win another 16 games while Detroit goes on to win the Stanley Cup, defeating the Colorado Avalanche in 7 games. Nathan McKinnon's going to lead all postseason scores though, 17 goals and 15 assists for 32 points, while Kosa, we already know what he's doing, he's hoisting the Stanley Cup, 16 wins, a 930 save percentage, and a 223 goals against. Great work my guy, you love to see it. Taking a look at the draft lottery results, we're dropping from 2 to 3, while the Chicago Blackhawks are going to jump from 10 to 1. So not only did they win the Stanley Cup last season, but one year later, they're jumping from 10 to 1. Yeah, this game makes so much sense. So we had 5 picks in the upcoming draft, and we're getting some elite players, but the third overall pick we're drafting Misa, a medium elite potential center, and then later in the draft, we're going to get another medium elite potential center. So I'm going to make one trade at the draft. I'm sending a sixth and a seventh to the Pens for a third. I think that's an absolute steal for us. So now we got a few moves at the re-sign phase. Misa, I'm going to give you your rookie deal, and then Sharoff, you're also going to get your rookie deal. Tovanen, I'm going to sign you to a one-year deal for 7.2. For some reason, if I wanted to sign him for three or four years, he was wanting 16 million a year. Yeah, that's just not happening. Peros, 7 million per year for the next six years. Then Haltonen, you're going to get seven years at 5.2 million. I think these last two contracts are absolute steals. But now we got to get some free agents. So now we'll go one year at 2.3 million. Provorov, three years at 6.8 million. Labushkin, one year at 2.4. And then Jamie Ben, one year at 3.5. But before we head into next season, I got to make one trade. A prospect, a third and a seventh, off to the New Jersey Devils for Dawson Mercer. So our team's slowly making progress here. and We're looking not too bad. We still have one more year until we can truly compete with the best in the league. But until then, the tank continues. So we'll simulate 50 games in and take a look at the team. The 50 game mark, we're looking awful, but that's all right. 17, 23, and 10. 8th in the Pacific and 29th in the entire league. I got no issues with that. Horvat, you're doing your thing. 18 goals, 25 assists, 43 points. Keep up the great work. So before we go to the trade deadline, I want to make two extensions. Tovanen, two years at 7 million, and Dawson Mercer, four years at 2.6. Honestly, Tovanen's bugging. This dude wants like 16 million a year, so I'm probably going to trade him in the next year or two. At the trade deadline, I am going to make one move. A second and a sixth round pick is off to the Rangers for Kravitzov. With that trade made, I'm going to simulate to the end of the season, and we'll see how the team finishes. Hopefully, we finish in the bottom three. When the season came to an end, we're doing much better than I was hoping for. 33, 36, and 13. 7th in the Pacific and 25th in the entire league. This is very disappointing. I'm trying to get the first overall pick, not the 10th overall. Horvat did his thing, though. 32 goals and 37 helpers for 69 points. And D'Angelo, he's leading the defense while looking amazing, picking up 51 points. Majelmic, 22 wins, a 902 save percentage, a 320 goals against. Honestly, my guy, I wasn't expecting too much from you, so you exceeded expectations. Looking at the entire league, Nathan McKinsey leading the way with 107 points, while Charlie McAvoy is going to lead all defense with 16 goals and 60 assists for 76 points and Sebastian Kosa once again he's leading all gold tenders and wins 42 while posting a 912 save percentage and a 270 goals against but this time in the playoffs Kosa isn't going to be able to win a stand the cup as Tampa Bay is going to defeat the Seattle Kraken in six games Steven Stamkos is going to lead all postseason scores 18 goals and 18 assists for 36 points while Vasilevsky he's going to pick up 16 wins with a 906 save percentage and 285 goals against for what I would believe would be his fourth Stanley Cup because he's already won one in this video he had two before this video yeah four Stanley Cups great work my guy you're looking elite so taking a look at the draft lottery results, we're getting the 10th overall pick. We used three picks in the upcoming draft, but our best prospect ended up being Green Tree, who's going to be a medium top four potential defenseman. And I didn't make one trade during the draft, which is sending a third and a fourth to the Ducks for a prospect in a second. So now we got to re-sign some players. Kravitzaw, I'm going to give you four years at 5.5 million. Green Tree, I'm giving you your rookie deal. Kovanov, six years at 3.6 million. And then Gavinov, I'm going to send you to Detroit for a fifth and a sixth. I got to clear up some cap space because we're about to make some massive moves. Igor Shosturkin, six years, 10.3 million. Welcome to the team. You're going to help turn this franchise around.
around. And then Tovanen, McLeod, a second and a fifth is going to the Flames for Tyson Marsh. And then Marsh, I'm going to get an absolute steal of a deal with you. 4.75 million per year for the next five years. You're going to be like an 88 overall player getting paid $4 million. That's an absolutely fantastic deal for us. Horvat, you're a Hawaii legend. You'll never be forgotten here, but I got to clear up some cap space because we're about to make a massive move. So I'm going to send you to Arizona for Gunther. And then I'm flipping Gunther a second and a sixth to the Ducks for Minty Yukov. But we did have one problem. The Predators are going to screw me for taking Tovan in earlier. They're going to offer Marsh a three-year deal at $6 million per season. Of course, I'm matching this. But now I've got to pay him an additional $1.25 million that I wasn't looking for. And the contract's two years shorter than it originally would have been. Nashville just wants to get some revenge. You hate to see it. And we still got a few more moves. Evander Kane, one year, $2.3 million. Blankenberg, $800K for one year. Connor Garland, one year, $2 million. Anton Forsberg, one year, $1.8 million. And then a medium elite prospect along with a six is going to the Kings for Pernelli and a low elite potential prospect. So honestly, I think our team's looking really solid. Our defense is probably the best in the league and we have a top three goalie. So I don't think anyone's going to be able to stop us now. So I'll go ahead and simulate through 10 games and we'll see how the team's looking. Through the first 10, we're not looking as great as I thought we would. We're going four, five, and one. Now I'm a bit concerned about the team, but we're picking it up in the next 15 going nine and six. And at the 50 game mark, we're one of the best teams in the league, 32, 17, and one. So that means over our last 25 games, we went 19 and six. I think we're legit. We're first in the Pacific and sixth in the entire league. You love to see it, you really do. Marsh is going to be leading the way with 25 goals and 22 helpers for 47 points, but Paris is also going to be tied with 47 points, consisting of 15 goals and 32 helpers. Tony D'Angelo is doing his thing leading the defense. Three goals and 24 helpers for 27 points. Well, Igor Shesterkin, he's got 24 wins with a 906 save percentage and a 291 goals against. Great work, my guy. Keep it up. And before we get to the trade deadline, I'm going to give one extension. Rue two, three years at 8.5 million. At the trade deadline, we got to make one move seen as we're doing so well. So I'm going to send a prospect a third and a six over to the Penguins for Cal Yarcrow. When the season came to an end, we're looking absolutely fantastic. 47, 27, and eight. First in the Pacific, but seventh in the entire league. But keep in mind, we did a 47 wins, so we're an elite team. I'm not too concerned. Peros was leading the way with 22 goals and 51 assists for 73 points, where Tony D'Angelo did his thing for the defense, picking up 51 points. And Igor Sesterkin, 36 wins, a 904 save percentage, and 289 goals against. Nothing I can complain about. Looking at the entire league, Nathan McKinnon's going to be leading the way with 54 goals and 41 assists for 95 points, while Kale McCarr's leading all defensemen with 87 points. And Andre Vasilevsky, he's going to pick up 43 wins with a 912 save percentage at 258 goals against. So we're going to be making the playoffs for the first time in franchise history, and we're taking on the Vancouver Canucks. My biggest concern right now is in the last 10 games, the Canucks are 8-2, so they're rolling. But I don't got to worry about the Canucks. We're going to take them down in six games, and now we got the Oilers in the second round. But sadly, we're going to be falling in six games to Edmonton. When the playoffs came to an end, Detroit's going to be beating the Winnipeg Jets in seven games. Minty Yukov was actually pretty solid for us. Three goals and seven assists for 10 points. While Shifley, he's leading all postseason scores with 13 goals and 17 assists for 30 points. Not too bad of a performance from him. And Sebastian Kosa, he's hoisting his second Stanley Cup. 16 wins, a 9.30 save percentage, and a 2.20 goals against. Taking a look at the draft lottery results, Montreal's going to be getting the first overall pick. We only had four picks in the upcoming draft, but that means we're making moves. Our best prospect ended up being a medium top four potential defenseman, but I'm going to flip that player along with a fourth and a seventh to the Winnipeg Jets for Cam Allen. In free agency, we're not making too many signings. Paul Cole's in one year, 1.8 million, and then Darcy Kemper, you're going to be the backup for 800k. So I think we got ourselves a Stanley Cup roster. Based on how we performed last season, I have big expectations from this team because we should be even better. Through the first 10 games, things are looking fantastic. 7-1-2, and two, and I see a Stanley Cup in our future. But things changed over the next 15 as we went 7-7-1. Seven, seven, and one. Now I'm a bit concerned, but I shouldn't be concerned. We have an elite team at the 50 game mark, 30-15-5, first in the Pacific, third in the entire league, and we're going for a Stanley Cup. Holtonen, he's looking absolutely elite. 25 goals and 28 assists for 53 points, while Tyson Marsh is leading the team with 30 goals. Tony D'Angelo is leading the defense, of course. Three goals and 30 assists for 33 points. Moses Sturkin, 26 wins, a 903 save percentage, and a 277 goals against. Keep up the great work, my guy. So I'm going to simulate right to the end of the season because I don't see how we can make our team any better with the little amount of cap space we have because we have like 500k to our name, so we got nothing. When the season came to an end, the Hawaii Heroes are looking elite. 49, 23, and 10. First in the Pacific and third in the entire league. Holton is looking fantastic. 86 points consisting of 42 goals and 44 helpers. With Tony D'Angelo stepped it up in the second half, he's picking up 67 points consisting of 9 goals and 58 assists. And Ewer Sisterkin, he's at the top of the league. 42 wins with a 905 save percentage and 271 goals against. Looking at the entire league though, Austin Matthews, he's leading the way with 109 points, while Kale McCarr is leading all defensemen with 78. And we already know Igor Sisterkin, he's picking up the most wins in the NHL. So in the first round, we got to take on the Nashville Predators. They tried to screw us earlier, but we're going to get our revenge by knocking them out in the playoffs. Nashville's putting up a bit of a fight, but it's not enough. We're taking them down in six games, and now we got the Edmonton Oilers in the second round. Drysdale and McDavid are putting up a good fight, but when it came down to seven games, we're coming out on top. And now we got the Minnesota Wild in the conference finals. Surprisingly, Minnesota being the toughest team we've taken on so far, actually didn't put up the biggest fight. We're taking them down in five games, and here we are, the Stanley Cup final, the Hawaii 
Hawaii Heroes are taking on the Carolina Hurricanes. And when the playoffs came to an end, the Hawaii Heroes, they're going to defeat the Carolina Hurricanes in six games to hoist the Stanley Cup. Tyson Marshall led the way for us. 13 goals, 7 assists, 20 points. Great work, my guy. Well, Martin Nikas, he's leading all postseason scores. 7 goals and 21 helpers for 28 points. And now we got to take a look at our Stanley Cup goaltender, Igor Sesterkin. 16 wins, a 921 save percentage, and 242 goals against. Thanks for all the help, my guy. We wouldn't have been able to do this without you. And just like that, I turned the worst team of all time, an 0 82 team, into Stanley Cup champions in just five seasons. Not gonna lie, this video put my GMing skills to the test, but I think I did a pretty solid job.